Okay, now, set up equations and solve using the quantity rate table if helpful. I'm going to do five examples. Here's example one. Oh, excuse me. And example two. Um, example three. And four is hydrogen peroxide. And example five is going to be um, high, uh, the 4% uh, glucose solution mixed with water. So sorry, a 50% glucose solution mixed with water to produce a 4% glucose solution, okay? So looking at example one, how many kilograms of coffee at $15 per kilogram must be blended with uh, coffee at $9 per kilogram to produce 300 kilograms of a blend selling for $11 per kilogram? Does that look familiar? In the previous video, we should have seen this. That the answer is, if we blend 100 kilograms at $15 per kilogram with 200 kilograms at $9 per kilogram, we'll find that that amounts to a total of 300 kilograms of coffee, and the um, and the total cost will be $1,300, and the average uh, cost per kilogram will be $11. So the answer is 100 of kilograms coffee A, 200 kilograms of coffee B. But the question is, how do we find the answer? Because this is going to be unknown, so we'll probably have to call it X, and this will be unknown, so we'll have to call it Y. We have to come up with, with these numbers, 100 and 200, okay? So that's the trick. We know the answer, but how do we find the answer with algebra? Or in any way, in fact. Um, and algebra is a good tool to use. So we set up a quantity rate table. First of all, quantity is kilograms, quantity and rate is the price per kilogram. So quantity kilograms, kg, and we've got coffee A and coffee B. Coffee A, it says how many kilograms of coffee A. So we don't know this number. At $15 per kilogram, that's the rate, dollars per kilogram, 15, must be blended with coffee B at $9 per kilogram. Again, we don't know the amount of coffee B, so let's call it Y. We don't know this number, and the rate is $9 per kilogram. Okay, now it's to produce a blend a blend or the mix, which is, I'll do that in black, it's to produce 300 kilograms of a blend. So the total quantity of the blend is 300 kilograms. And that's going to sell for $11 per kilogram. So basically we're given 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers. And we have to find 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers. Okay. Well, in actual fact, you know, we just need A and B, X and Y to solve the, the equation. But in any case, we can use this table to come up with two equations to find the two unknown variables. Now, quantity goes here, rate goes here, and in this column we always have quantity times rate. So we have x times 15, or 15x. Here we have y times 9, or 9 times y. And here we have again quantity times rate, 300 times 11 which gives us the familiar number 3300 okay now what does that number mean and what do all the numbers mean that's what we need to understand that will help us solve these things so um, 300 kilograms of a blend eleven dollars per kilogram this is the total cost of the blend so this quantity rate column represents total cost, $3,300, okay? And um, so we also have to understand what, you know, the, the variables mean. Well, th let's have a look at this column. This X here represents the amount of kilograms of coffee A. This Y is the kilograms of coffee B. When we add kilograms of A with kilograms of B, we get 300 kilograms altogether. And so we have this equation, which is 
x plus y equals 300. Okay. 15 times x. This is the amount of kilograms. X is the kilograms of coffee A. This is, and, and it costs $15 per kilogram. So 15 times x is the cost. This represents the cost of coffee A. 9 times y, that's y kilograms of B, $9 per kilogram. 9 times y is the cost of B. And the reason we did the practice problems before with just numbers is so we understand this. Because what we're going to find is x is 100. And, and so instead of 15 times x over here, instead of 15x, we have 15 times 100. $1,500, which is the cost of A. Uh, y is 200, and instead of 9 times x, or 9 times y, we're going to have 9 times 200, which is 1800, the cost of coffee B. Okay? Now, the cost of coffee A added to the cost of coffee B gives the total cost, doesn't it? And in this table, we can say that too. This is the cost of A. If we add that to the cost of B, we will get the total cost, because this is the total cost, total cost of the blend. Okay? So 15x plus 9y equals 3300. And now we have two equations with two unknowns, x and y, and we can solve for x and y. Now, you didn't have to use a quantity rate table, but I do use it because most, almost all students prefer to do it that way because, you know, it, it, it's, it's a standard procedure and it always works out. But if you want, you could come up with these equations you know, by by reading the problem and figuring it out yourself. But at, at whatever happens, you have to get these two equations and then solve them. So what comes to mind? Substitution, elimination, or graphing. You can use either method. When I see this, I automatically think of substitution. So I think to do something like this. Subtract x from both sides and get y equals 300 minus x. Put parentheses around this and plug that in for y. y is the same as this, so this can be put in place of y. So this equation can read 15 times x plus 9 instead of times y times 300 minus x equals 3300 and we can solve the equation. So we need to simplify this side so we get 15x plus 9 threes 2700 9 times negative x minus 9x equals 3300 and eventually we'll find the value of x. So 15 minus 9 is 6, so we have 6x plus 2700 equals 3300. Subtract 2700 from both sides, and we should have 6x is equal to 600. Divide both sides by 6, and we have x equals 100. Okay, so we have found the value of x. Are we done? Is that it? Not done yet, right? We need to find y. And how, what's the easiest way to find y? We could plug 100 in here for x, or in here, or we could plug 100 in here. We have this, this, and this. Th three places to put 100 to get y. The easiest one, of course, is here. So we would just have y equals 300 instead of 300 minus x, 300 minus 100, and so we would have y equals 200, okay? And that's the answer. And, you know, we can go ahead and check our, check our answer. Um, so x and so y is 100, that should be um, 100 plus 2, sorry, is 300. 100 plus 200 is 300, that works out. And also we should have 15 times 100 plus 9 times 200 gives 3300. And you'll find that works out. That's 1500 plus 1800. And that, of course, works out. So you can check your answer also. So what did we find? We found exactly what we were looking for, that the um, kilograms of coffee A we need is 100 kilograms. And coffee Y we need two or coffee B we need two hundred kilograms. And if we blend these together, we get the required blend, which is three hundred kilograms at eleven dollars per kilogram cost.
Example two, a bank pays 4% interest on investments and a stock investment promises 12% interest. How should $12,000 be split to produce an average interest rate of 5.3%? Again, if you've done the previous video, this should look familiar. We know the answer. <laughs> okay, The answer is we need, if we invest $2,000 in stocks and it's $10,000 in the bank, and the stock is 12% interest, the bank is 4% interest, then the, the, the result of this is that we'll be a total investment of $12,000 at an average rate of 5.3%. Okay? So our, question, our new question is, if we don't know this number, so call it X, and we don't know this number, call it Y, how do we find the 2,000 and the 10,000? Okay? So we're just given this information, and we have to find that this is split into $2,000 and $10,000. So let's see how we do it. So we write a quantity rate table. We're going to put some money in the bank. We're going to put some money in stocks. Okay. How much money do we put in the bank? The bank pays 4% interest. Stock promises 12%. How should that total amount be split to the bank and stocks to produce that? We don't know. But in any case, bank, stocks, and then we're going to look at the total invested. <coughs> Total invested, we're told, the total invested is $12,000. Okay. And for the total column, we're told that the rate is 5 and a third percent. Now, we know that one third is 0 0.33333. So that is 5.333 continuing percent, which is 5.333, let's say, over 100, which gives 0 0.053 three and so on okay so let's just round that um, average interest to be a decimal 0 0.0533 and just let's stop there so we'll have a small bit of error but it'll be close enough four decimal places should be good enough okay we're told the bank interest rate is four percent so we know by now that that's 0 0.04 not 0 0.4 by the way uh, and 12% interest in stocks, that's 0 0.12. How much money do we invest in the bank? It's unknown, so we call it X. How much money do we invest in stocks? That's unknown, call it Y. And in this column, we need to put quantity times rate. Okay? So X times that would be 0.04X. Y times this would be 0 0.12 times Y. And this times this would be, you know, 0 0.0533 times 12,000. And if we put that in the calculator, we get 63960. Um, let's just give it another decimal place just to... Um, Let's let's do 0 0.5323 just just to make that a little bit more accurate so we don't have to deal with too many decimals in this example. So it looks like we get 63996. So that's approximately there $640. Okay? Approximately. Now, so what does it all mean? The quantity is the amount of dollars invested in each place. So X dollars in the bank, Y dollars in the stocks, and the total invested is that amount. So the first equation is easy enough to come up with. The amount in the bank plus the amount in the stocks equals the total amount. That makes sense. So we can write down our first equation, which is just going to be um, X plus Y is equal to 12,000, right? Now... The second equation, by the way, the rate, you never add these. These would add to 0.16, and that doesn't make this. So you don't add rates. It doesn't make any sense. Rate is the interest rate. Okay? But quantity times rate is also a dollar amount. And if we have a look at this, bottom row, row will understand what it means. Invest $12,000, 
at you know five and a third percent interest and get this number. So multiply 0 0.0533 times twelve thousand and we get six hundred and forty dollars. What does the six hundred and forty dollars mean? What is that? It is the interest at the end of the year, total interest, right? So this column represents the interest amount, the amount of interest. Now, if I take the amount invested in the bank, which is X, multiply it by 0.04, I will get 4% of X. So I'll get the interest amount in the bank. And if I look back to this example, we, we know what the answer is. It's 2,000, or, whoops. Oh, I have them mixed upside down. My mistake. Sorry, here stocks is on top, here the bank's on top. But in any case, just we're supposed to look at this now. It's $10,000 invested in the bank at 4%. Multiply them, we get $400. Do you see that? So this is the amount of interest from the bank. So, But in our case, of course, we don't have 0 0.04 times 10,000. We just have 0 0.04 times X because we don't know the 10,000 yet. Okay, And same with the stocks. You invest Y dollars in stocks, 12% interest. This is 12% of Y, and, you know, that's the amount of interest. It's $240 is what it is. So it's 0 0.12 times Y because we don't know that Y is 2,000 yet, okay? Uh, by the way, you know, these, these are mixed upside down. But in any case, it doesn't matter if you put one, which one you put on top, obviously, then. In any case, the amount of interest from the bank plus the amount of interest from the stocks gives the total interest for the year. So we can write an equation. 0.04x plus 0.12y is equal to total interest $640. Okay? Now we have two equations, two unknowns, x and y. We can solve. You can use substitution, elimination, or graphing. Now, personally, I guess when I see this, the first thing I think of is substitution. It looks easiest. Just subtract x on both sides, and you have y equals 12,000 minus x. Take this expression and plug it in for y, and you have 0.04x plus 0.12 times 12,000 minus x is equal to 640. And now you're back, back to math 60. You just have to solve the equation for x, okay? So I'm sure you're capable of doing that. So you can press pause in the video and see if you get the same answer as me. Now I'll do it. 0.04x plus multiply this <coughs> in, excuse me. So it should be 1, 4, 4. Uh, 10 percent O, I think, and then minus 0.12x equals 640. Adding like terms, you should get negative 0.08x plus 1440 equals 640. Subtract the 1440 from both sides to get negative 0.08x equals. Um, this minus this, that goes away, it should be negative 800. Divide both sides by negative 0 0.08. And this is a great opportunity to see that a negative divided by a negative should definitely give a positive because we know the answer should be positive number at least. And in fact, it should be positive 10,000, okay? So we have found the amount we're going to invest in the bank, $10,000, right? Now we need to find Y. The easiest equation to use would probably be this one, wouldn't it? Because we'd have Y equals 12,000 minus X, or minus 10,000. And so that gives us Y equals $2,000. So we invest $10,000 in the bank, $2,000 in stocks, and we get the required answer, which is a total investment of $12,000 at an average rate of 5.3%. So if you're ready for it, go ahead and press pause on the video and do this example all by yourself. 
and then see if you get the same answer as I do. Now I'll do it. A credit card loan costs 10% interest and a bank loan costs 6% interest. How should this amount be borrowed to keep the average rate at 7.5%? So first thing is we should probably set up a quantity rate table. Although if you're understanding everything quite well and you just want to write down the two equations, by all means do so. You don't have to do a quantity rate table, but for most students it helps. So we're going to invest to get a loan from the credit card and a loan from the bank. Um, how much do we get? The quantity is the amount loaned from the credit card. So the quantity is in dollars. How much do we loan from the credit card? We don't know. But the rate is going to be 10%, 0 0.10. And then quantity times rate, 0 0.10 times X. Okay. The bank, how much do we loan? We don't know. But the rate is 6%, 0 0.06. Quantity times rate is 0 0.06 times y. And then we have how should that be borrowed. So this is the total loan, or the combined loan amount. The total loan is $20,000. And the rate is given 7.5%. That is 7.5%, isn't it? Because a half is 0.5. So that's 7.5 divided by 100, put that in the calculator, you'll get 0 0.075. Okay. Now quantity times rate is 0 0.075 times 20,000. And put that in the calculator. And that should give us $1,500. Did you get that? Uh, I don't think I made a mistake yet. But now, now what do we do? We've got to come up with two equations so we can find the two unknowns. Okay, so one thing we, we always know is that the amount loaned from the credit card plus the amount loaned from the bank, which is y, should give the total amount loaned. So, x plus y should give $20,000. Okay? Now, the other thing we know is what we should understand what these numbers mean and be able to come up with an equation also. Um, let's have a look at the bottom row. Total loan is 20000 The average rate is 0.075. Now, if I do this, 0.075 times 20,000, I get this number. What does this number represent? That's 7.5% of 20,000 gives 1,500, which is the amount of interest, total amount of interest that you pay during the year. So this column is the interest amount for each row. So the total interest for the year is $1,500. So if I take 10% 10, 10 of X, which is the credit card amount, this is the interest from the credit card. So this is the you know credit card interest. If I take 6% 6 of the bank amount, this is the bank interest. And if I add these the, the credit card interest with the bank interest, I should get the total interest. Okay. So 0.10x plus 0.06y equals 1500. So there's my second equation. Now I can solve. Two equations, two unknowns, you can solve it. So why am I bothering to explain these numbers um, when we don't need to? You're right, we don't need to. If you have a quantity rate table, you don't have to understand anything. You just have to remember that you add these to equal this, you add these to equal this. Okay? Um, but it's you know very useful to know because it will really help you as you go along. And also some of you might at this point be able to figure out the equations without a table at all. Okay? So you can think of this as the amount equation and this would be the interest equation. But in any case, the more you understand, the easier math becomes. So, you know, press pause in the video, solve this by yourself. Okay, now I'll do it. Subtract x from both sides. I'm going to solve by substitution. y equals 20,000 minus x. 
put parentheses around this, put that in for y, I'll get 0 0.10 times x plus 0 0.06 times 20,000 minus x, and that's equal to 1,500. Okay? And now I have an equation with x in it, and I can solve that. So I just get, you know, 0 0.10x, multiply this in, plus 0 0.06 times that should be 1, 2, 1,200, right? And then minus 0.06x, and that equals 1,500. And add like terms here, 10 minus 6 is 4, so 0.04x um, plus 1,200 equals 1,500. And then subtract the 1,200 from both sides. Now we should have 0.04x equals 300. And divide both sides by 0.04. Okay, and x equals, and on the calculator you can do that, but in any case it's 30,000 over 4. And let's see, 4 to 4 goes once, 4 to that goes 7 times, and 2 over 5. So 7, 5. Um, Seven thousand five hundred, right? So that's our x value, and now we have to find the y value. And using this equation, y is twenty thousand minus x, so twenty thousand minus seventy five hundred, and our y value becomes um, twelve five hundred, I believe, right? So, the answer is that if we loan the x value, if we loan $7,500 from, from the credit card and $12,500 from the bank, the, 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 that, that will amount to a total loan of $20,000 at 7.5% interest. And so that answers our question. Okay? And of course, you know, always make sure you check your answers, especially when you're doing a test. So in your homework, make sure you check your answers, because 7,500 plus 12,500, that should equal 20,000, and it does. And then 0 0.10 times x, which is 7,500, plus 0 0.06 times 12,500 should give 1,500. So check that, and that is um, 750 plus this times this also gives 750. So, funny enough, it's the same amount of interest from both locations, isn't it? 750 interest paid to the credit card, 750 interest paid to the bank, and that gives 1,500 interest altogether. Example 4. How much hydrogen peroxide in a 2% solution must be blended with hydrogen peroxide in a 50% solution to obtain 500 liters of a 6% solution? Now our quantity rate application uh, method is going to work for combining fluids. Okay, So again, we just do a quantity rate table. And feel free to press pause on the video and solve it yourself, and then check to see if you got the same answer as I did. Okay, otherwise, in any case, I'm going to do it, so press pause whenever you like. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take two quantities, a 2% solution and a 50% solution, and combine them, okay? So, you know, here you go. 2% solution in one container, 50% solution in another, and you, you pour them together to make a, a big container of... Um, of 500 liters and we have to get has to make a 6% solution so the question is how much of the 2% must be combined with the 50% to give the um, the required amount 500 liters of 6% solution so we have a 2% solution combined with a 50% solution to give a blend or a mix of 6%, a 6% solution. And this is the mix, this is the blend, okay? 
So again, we don't know how much 2%, we don't know how much 50%, but we do know the answer. We do know that the blend, which the blend needs to be 500 uh, liters. Sorry, that should be SOL for solution. Now, the rate of the 2%, of course, is 2%. Now, 2% is 2 per 100, as you know, which is 0 0.02. 50%, 0.50. 6%, of course, is, you know, 6 per 6 over 100, which is 0 0.06. And in this column, we just do quantity times rate. So 0 0.02 times x, 0 0.50 times y, and 0 0.06 times 500. Multiply that, and we get 3. Um, uh, 30, I guess, right? And it would be 5, right? So, yeah, so 30 liters. So the question is, now what? Well, you can just go ahead and remember that with a quantity rate table, you can add these and they equal that, and then add these and they equal that. But it's always a good idea to try and understand what the numbers mean. So if we look at the bottom row, we have this mix. It's 500 liters at 6%. Then we have this number 30. So let's understand what it all means. This is the liters amount that's that's put in. This is the um, the concentration uh, percentage. You could you could think of it that way: concentration or the strength of the solution. This 30 represents what? That's the question. What does 30 percent 30 represent? Now, what we need to understand is this here. 0 0.6 times 500 is getting 6 percent of 500. And we're told that the answer is it's 500 liters of a 6 percent hydrogen peroxide solution. So we're getting 6 percent of 500 um, and this 30 actually represents the amount of pure hydrogen peroxide um, in the mix. Okay? 30 liters. There's 30 liters of pure hydrogen peroxide in the mix. So that also helps us to understand what these two quantities represent. This is the total liters of 2% solution. And if I get 2% of the total amount of this, so if here it is, here's a 2% solution. If I get 2% of the total amount, this is the amount of pure peroxide in, in here. This is So this is the amount of, you know, this is pure, you know, hydrogen peroxide in, in this solution. And, and this would be pure hydrogen peroxide from here. This is, so, you know, if this was, say, you know, 100 liters, 50% of 100 would be 50, so this would be 50 liters of pure hydrogen peroxide, again, right? So again, you know, this is your pure um, hydrogen peroxide from this uh, container, okay? So in any case, it's always good to understand math. It makes it easier and makes it, uh, you know, makes it make sense. But, so the amount of 2% plus the amount of 50% gives the, the mix, which is 500 liters. So x plus y equals 500. Then we have the pure peroxide, hydrogen peroxide plus the pure from, from, from this container plus the pure peroxide from this container gives the pure peroxide in the mix. So we have 0 0.02 times x plus 0 0.50 y gives the 30 and then just solve by substitution. So press pause and do that. And of course you don't need me to show you again, but we subtract x from both sides, you get y equals 500 minus x. We uh, put that in place of y, so we get, you know, 0 0.02 times x plus 0 0.50 times 500 minus y is equal to 30, and we just, you know, keep going, solve that. So 0 0.02x plus Multiply this in, 250 minus 0 0.50y equals 30. Add like terms. Oh, my mistake. This should have been x, shouldn't it? Made a mistake there. That should be x. Look what happens when you rush. Never rush your math, huh? 
negative 0.48x plus 250 equals 30. Subtract 250. So don't rush your math like I'm doing. Negative 0.48x equals that minus that, negative 220. And divide both sides by negative 0.48. And we should have x equals and negative over negative gives positive. Uh, 220 over 0 0.48, uh, 458.333, continuing. Okay, so we found the value of x. Now find the value of y, and y should equal 500 minus the 458.333 and so on. So y should equal... Um, 41.666 continuing. So we have the values for x and y. Now, if you want, you can write, you know, x is 458 and one third because 0.333 is one third, isn't it? We should know that by now. So now change this one to a frac to a mixed number. This would be 41 and 0.66666 is two thirds, isn't it? And this is liters and this is liters. So we have the answer that if we put 458 and a third liters of 2% solution mixed with 41 and two thirds liters of 50% solution, we will indeed get 500 liters altogether and the, 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 the solution concentration will be 6% as desired. And example 5, explain how to prepare 200 milliliters of a 4% glucose solution from a 50% solution. Dilute the solution with distilled water. So, press pause in the video, see if you can do it, and then see if I've done it correctly. So, what we need to do is we need to understand the problem. We have a 50% solution. We have distilled water. We are going to mix these together, okay, to get hopefully a 4% solution. So that's the first thing. Understand what we need to do. We need to mix 50% solution with distilled water to come up with a 4% solution. Now, that's going to, what's going to happen is we're going to have 200 milliliters of the 4%. So the quantity in liters is going to be 200. Okay. The rate, of course, is 4%, 0 0.04. And then we'll, we'll do the rest. Uh, the 50% solution, we don't know how much we need. And the rate of that, of course, is 0 0.50. The distilled water, we don't know how much distilled water we need to mix. But what we need to do is put in the rate. So this is the interesting part of this problem. Everything else is exactly the same as the others. What is the rate for this distilled water? We're talking about glucose. In this 50% solution, the rate is 50%. Because 50% of this solution here, 50% of this solution, um, contains is is uh, glucose, pure glucose, right? Half of this solution is glucose. If we look at the the mix, it's four percent solution, okay, and it's um, so four percent of it is pure glucose. So my question to you is, how much glucose is contained in distilled water? Well, it's nothing, isn't it? Zero, zero percent. This is 0%. The rate is 0%. So 0 or 0, 0.00, whichever you like. It's 0. And then we just fill out the table. This becomes 0.50x. This becomes 0 times y. This becomes 0 0.04 times 200, which is um, 8, right? And then we just go ahead and solve the table as usual. So we, we say... The amount of the distilled fifty percent plus distilled water x plus y gives the total amount two hundred liters. The amount of glucose from this solution plus the amount of glucose from distilled water gives the total amount of glucose 
which is 8 liters. So we have 0.50x plus 0y, this is no glucose from the water, gives a total amount of glucose, which is 8. Now there's a really easy way to solve this equation, isn't there? What's 0 times y? Well, it's just equal to 0, isn't it? So this thing is 0. So we just have 0.50x equals 8. And we can go ahead and solve for x. Divide both sides by 0 0.50. And we get x is 16. Now solve for y. 16 plus y equals 200. Subtract 16 and we get y equals 184. So the answer is 16 liters of 50% solution added to 184 liters of water will give 200 liters with, at a 4% concentration level of glucose. So this is liters, this is liters. Okay.